Hi everyone. Are you struggling with your GMAT reading comprehension or critical reasoning skills? Lucky for you, I, Julia, have come to share some of my top tips to help you crush the verbal section. The first thing I want you to keep in mind for verbal is that all of the information that you need to answer the question will be provided in the question. This sounds really simple and obvious, but it was difficult for me to remember when I was in the midst of a particularly challenging question. That situation can feel a little hopeless sometimes, but I found that reminding myself of this base fact helped keep me grounded. While you'll be expected to make common sense mental leaps, such as businesses want to maximize profit, so all else equal, they will prefer the option that does so, or as fuel costs rise, the percentage of more fuel efficient cars, such as hybrids and electric cars, sold will increase. You won't ever need any specialized knowledge of a topic to answer a question on that topic correctly. If you feel like you do, just go back and make sure that you haven't missed anything in the prompt. The second thing to keep in mind is that any given premise must be assumed to be true. It's like improv rules, okay? In improv, when your scene partner says something, that's what's happening now. You can't disagree with it. So if your scene partner says that you are in Florida living happily with your 17 cats, well, that's what's happening. That's what you've got to work with. It's kind of like that. Even if the argument is super weak, you must take the premises as true. A common trap that I would fall into was trying too hard to connect things in a way that made sense to me or built a story that I preferred, but that can invite too much external knowledge or bias to the situation. Because this is a standardized test, everyone from everywhere and every background should be able to perform similarly on it. So you should never need any specialized knowledge like that. So for instance, if premise one is all blue fruits are apples and premise two is that I have been gifted a basket of exclusively blue fruits, it logically follows that I have been gifted a basket of apples. The third thing is to make sure you're finding your conclusions. I found it really improved my prep efficiency when I started jotting down in shorthand what the conclusions and the supporting evidence were when I'd read a verbal question. Even if my shorthand was sometimes as long as the question itself, I would skip over this stuff a lot when I first started since I felt that it was unnecessary and a waste of time. And of course I knew what the conclusion was, right? But you know how sometimes hurrying and skipping the steps actually makes things take longer? This was one of those situations for me. It turned out that I often had a vague idea of what the parts were instead of an accurate idea. And that would lead to me choosing the incorrect answer. Having to write them down forced me to figure out definitively where each part was and did not immediately forget or get them confused the second I was looking at the answer choices. Shockingly enough, that improved my accuracy. When I started to prep for verbal with TTP, I thought that their modules would be pretty easy, easier than some of the quant, because I noticed that many out of the modules were reiterated like between different question types. It turned out that those reiterative modules weren't freebies. <laughs> Uh, not only did being told several times to take detailed notes finally sink in for me, uh, but seeing the assorted answer applications through the lens of different question types was beneficial in and of itself. It allowed me to improve the variability of applying the approaches, and it gave me a bit of a foundation when I was learning about different question types because at least I was familiar with the approach to solving the questions, even if I hadn't applied it exactly like this before. Four. Get yourself some high quality reading material and start reading it today, 15 to 30 minutes every day until your test. A lot of the GMAT verbal section writing is pretty high level. Um, the best thing you can do to improve your performance analyzing high level written material is to get better at understanding high level written material and that will come with reading more of it. If you read some New York Times, Harvard Business Review, or Scientific American articles every day as if they're GMAT passages and you practice taking notes and identifying layouts, premises, and conclusions, you will get better at doing so. 
you will also get quicker at doing so. It was extra helpful for me to also read some articles that I wasn't inherently very interested in, so I could practice cultivating that interest since I didn't think I would only get personally interesting reading comp passages on my exam, which turned out to be true. Verbal's purpose on the GMAT is to test your ability to assess an argument or written information quickly and logically with good attention to detail, judgment, and comprehension. It also tests your ability to leave your own preconceived notions and biases at the door. In my experience in the business world, these are very valuable skills to have. Uh, they're not also as prevalent as you might think. And having a strong skill set in the areas that verbal tests for will help you thrive in any job where communication is important. So any job. Use your prep for this section as an opportunity to improve not only your GMAT score, but your value as an MBA candidate and as an employee. Invest in yourself now and it'll pay dividends forever. Best of luck.